Hey there, I'm Lee Ullman here with some big news from the National Young Farmers Coalition. We're partnering with Heritage Radio Network on a special season of The Farm Report. It's all about what's happening with the Farm Bill and how it impacts farmers and eaters. I am growing diversified vegetables on land that's been in our family for 150 years. And so with the pandemic, gentrification, property values going up, we had to sell the land and we lost it. Join us as we uncover the untold stories behind this massive piece of legislation that shapes how we grow our food, what we eat, and so much more. The problems we have had, those are things that come from earlier Farm Bill and USDA policy, right? Like Earl Butts, get big or get out. You know, it's my responsibility to know not only what I'm eating, but then like how, how that all came to be and realize like, wow, like this piece of legislation, all this money, like it's technically something that I support as a taxpayer. While Congress debates the next Farm Bill, this is not just an invitation to listen. It's a call to action. Be part of the conversation. Subscribe to the Farm Report on Heritage Radio Network wherever you listen to podcasts. You're listening to Heritage Radio Network. Since 2009, HRN Podcasts have been exploring the wide world of food, beverage, and agriculture. Learn more at heritageradionetwork.org. This episode is brought to you by Roberta's, home of Heritage Radio Network since 2009. Learn more about Roberta's at robertaspizza.com. So you don't shun the devil with your rock and roll load. Knows that country music's gonna save your soul. The devil runs his groove in them rhythm and blues that sound. It's gonna get you sun in the end. Welcome back to The Speakeasy. I'm Damon Bolte. I'm Souther Teague. And I'm Greg Benson. My guys. We're all here. I think it's the first... Yeah, First time since we've good. all been here, yeah, in quite some some time. I think mostly that was me being absent, and I apologize. Well, I, the, the, me in second place uh, as far as absence goes. Hey, man, I've been I've been keeping this place clean and tidy. I've been making sure the dishes are done, <laughs> floors are vacuumed. Like, where the hell have you guys been? I mean, not difficult uh. to keep it maintained when no one's around. <laughs> yeah, you clearly haven't seen my apartment. But we appreciate your efforts, Greg. We appreciate your efforts. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah no honestly uh I, I would never i would never do this but uh read an interesting piece over the weekend about how ai is continuing to replace human beings in but it'll never affect us it'll never affect us at the bar right of, of course not unless <laughs> unless you want to go on to and this is the way it was pitched from from where we heard this story at first the dark web Ooh, mm-hmm. and Dark pay web. an AI service to essentially say you're a bar owner and you want to boost sales. There I'm is, not, I am, I am those things. There, there is. Well, there is apparently for you, Souther, and you, Damon, if you should be the sort of person who would. Uh, be interested in this sort of service on the dark web, you can pay a company that will deploy AI bots to swipe through dating apps, schedule dates with people at your bar, Mm. send them there. And then at the appointed time, obviously not show up because they do not exist, but send texts that say, Oh, I'm running late. Sorry. And then eventually cancel. The so idea being they, yeah, so, that as as the mark sits at your bar, they go through, I would estimate, around two or three different drinks. Now, these services are not cheap, but if you consider the cost of an average cocktail anywhere, particularly in like New York City, I imagine this is a thing that would pay for itself fairly quickly. Yeah, I have a lot of problems with this. The <laughs> level of nefariousness in this, yeah, this is not... Uh, uh, this is toying with uh, human emotions. This is uh, uh, putting right. putting people in a place of uh, uh, like already they're going to be agitated, right? The first dates uh, yeah. are, are are often you know uh, agita inducing uh, on their own, much less being you know put on hold and told to wait and go ahead and have a drink until I get there. Uh, but the, the problem I think uh, that I see right away, of course, is uh, man, if you got busted for this, that that would be that would create such a uh, a foul taste in the consumer's mouth. Well, well it's not just that, so there it's the, think about this, even without getting busted, right? Mm-hmm. If 
say it was if you were the consumer who was being uh, prompted to go to this bar by uh, a fake person from a dating site after how many dates going to this bar being stood up at it would you finally be like all right i'm never coming to this place again date or no date yeah exactly it's like uh you get a bad uh just a bad vibe from that place i i um, every time i go to that place bad things happen right yeah we rely on regular customers too so you don't want to like cut anyone off or have them you know not not continue to come to your uh, your establishment. Right? Not to mention, Damon, you know, and, and even Greg, when you're behind the bar, how many times do you have people come in and they they, they sidle up, they get their seat, they settle in, and you hand them a menu and you say, what can I get for you? And they say, oh, I'm just going to wait for my, my friend to arrive. Yeah, right? mm-hmm. I was thinking about uh, that too. Then you've got a seat. Exactly. So now, the, now it's doing money, the opposite you know? of its of its intended purpose, right? It's, just, it's, it's right. causing you to lose money instead of actively getting you to gain money. Or revenue. Okay, but guys, think about it this way. Right. Are you going to fight for the robots? Just oh suppose. No, I'm not fighting for the robots. And I'm not fighting He's on for... screen right now. Yeah, you know, he might very... be a robot. Yeah. You, you, would, ne- you would never know. You I just fed my voice and all of my fun quips into an AI program. I'm actually just... I'm taking a nap right now. Yeah, um, <laughs> but, you know, suppose someone goes to a bar and their date cancels and they wind up having actually a lovely time either connecting with the bartender or with another human being there. Like, it seems like this Who's is Who's also sort of... sitting there waiting for a non-existent date to arrive. Exactly. <laughs> I know. What a meet cute that is. Like we were yeah. both scammed by the same AI and we wound up hitting it off. Like, no, actually, in fact, this happened to be at uh, Moria Margo a little while ago. Like for the first time in uh, at least like a decade, I went in by myself and I wound up sitting next to someone who was also there by herself and we hit it off and we vibed and we exchanged numbers. And I was kind of like, is this even still legal? Like, are we even still allowed to do this? <laughs> like there could, I see a scenario like, you know, in a Spike Jones her sort of way, not in like a James Cameron Terminator sort of way where this actually <laughs> could potentially bring people closer together. It's still scummy, but I see a way that this could play out not horribly, unless, of course, you get caught doing it, in which case you're no one's ever going to come. All bets are off. You're, yeah, you've, you've lost the public trust. Yeah, I, I think it's too dangerous a game. I don't know how how if your bar can't if your bar is functioning at such a low level that this seems like a, a viable option to you. I think maybe it's time to reexamine your business plan. <laughs> right, right. You know, that's, I mean, that's you're already doing something woefully wrong. If you can't, if, yeah, if, you're, you, you don't if your method in this of getting business. people in is to literally <laughs> bait and switch <laughs> <laughs> with with the most you know uh, egregious of baits, um, yeah. I don't, I don't think, know. Uh, I will also uh, say, as a bartender, I've had a lot of fun with people whose Tinder dates haven't shown up over the years who actually, like, are, you know, turn out to be cool people. Some people, I'm sure, you know, storm off, and I never knew that that was why they were there by themselves. But there have been times where people have come in and their dates have either, uh, you know, not shown up or, even worse, shown up and sucked. And I actually wound up hitting it off with those people. In fact, um, I had one incident where a woman came in and was on, I, I guess, a Tinder date. And this is at the bar where I only ever played Mystery Science Theater 3000 on the TV. It's, Love just, it. it's because, it, because it is the perfect bar show and anyone who says otherwise is wrong. And I'm obviously really into it. She's really into it. Her date was not into it. There was no chemistry. And after they left, I looked at the tab and I was like, wow, I'm kind of surprised that guy actually tipped. And my friend who was at the bar goes, are you surprised because you were hitting on his date the entire time? I'm like, well, I didn't mean to. It's just right. we ha- we vibed. But she came back a couple months later with someone else, and she's like, oh, good, they're playing Mystery Science Theater 3000. This is the bar I was telling you about where where they do they only do this on the TV. And the two of them hit it off, and at the end of the night, they were making out at the end of my bar. And I was like, I have created love in this situation. <laughs> so I don't know, man. Without AI. Exactly. <laughs> But, but, ro- but robots were involved. <clears throat> That's, hey, yeah, life finds a way somehow. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, the right kind of robots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the ones making fun of movies. Don't ask why they're there. Enough about people who don't exist. Let's talk to some people who do exist, Greg. <laughs> who do you have in the studio for us this week? Right. Let's do that. In the studio with us, we have two certified real people in the virtual studio. We have Jamie Hunt of Fast Penny Series. 
Fast Penny Spirits mm-hmm. and Kim Harmon from Maker's Mark. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Glad to be here. Thank you for having us. Now, I guess the obvious first question is, have you two ever been scammed by AI? I mean, it's new to the market yet, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. In- Not for me. No. Not at this point. No, but... I still keep getting phone calls about selling my house, but other than that. Yeah, your car's <laughs> extended warranty is out of date. I don't know if you knew uh, this, yeah. but... I get those house and car phone calls a lot. And of course, I live in New York City where I don't own and probably never will either of those things. <laughs> yeah. I get my... So the bots aren't that smart is what I'm saying. I don't think the bots, are, the bots are that clever. Yeah, until they figure out how to imitate my super and be like, hey, I need to get into your building sometime between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. today. Then then, then I might actually call <laughs> Uh, well, we're. I, I'm super excited to talk to you both because uh, we're we're going to talk about something that when it was first pitched to me, I was kind of like, "Ugh, this sounds boring." But the more I read into it, the more it was actually really, really interesting. I want to talk to you both about B Corps, um, and I promise you, listener at home, this is not, this is going to be cool. It's it sounds it sounds <laughs> dull at first. It's going to get super interesting. But uh, first of all, could you just walk us through a little bit? What what is a B Corp? You want to start, Jamie? <laughs> Sure. Yeah. So um, the way I look at B Corps is um, they're, um, it's a global certifying body. Um, there's over 6,700 B Corps in the world. Um, in the U.S., there's about, um, there's less than 12 distilleries that are B Corps. Uh, worldwide, less than 30. So it's not easy to get into this certification to be certified. And what they're certifying you on are three, I look at it as three different things. Um, they're, they're certifying you on people. So how do you treat your people? How well do you pay them? Do you give them time off? Um, you know, is there op- opportunity for, um, you know, 401k uh, matching and things like that? Um, for community, they're looking at how are you involving your community? Do you have a give back program? You know, how are you integrating into the community? And then uh, environment, like, are you being sustainable with your environment? I mean, it's all, in essence, a sustainability thing, but they're looking at it from people, community, and environment. And you get certified. Uh, It took us about two years to get certified. And then you recertify every three years. You um, need to put language in your bylaws uh, as well. So it's a real serious um, uh, certification process. And companies that have done it besides ours that are here uh, are Warby Parker, Ben & Jerry's, Patagonia. Uh, So there's a lot, Allbirds. There's a lot of really cool brands that are doing really great things in the world um, that are part of this B Corp family. I I would ask first of all like uh, maybe the listener remembers when I opened Ateria a year and a half almost two years ago I sort of did this on my own with every bottle that's on the back bar everything on the back bar has been tequila and mezcal and I wanted to vet them for sustainability but I wanted to vet them for also everything you just listed sustainability of how they're treating their people and their community and you know uh, are they trying to you know you know keep the traditions alive and, and continue doing the thing that they're doing I didn't even know this was a was the sort of structure of B Corps. How long have B Corps been around? And I guess what is the advantage uh, of going through all this diligence and process that probably costs you some some money, if, if not just time? Um, what's the advantage of doing it? Um, well, I don't know exactly when B Corp was founded. Do you know, Jamie? I don't know, but you know, I heard about it like six years ago before I even started my company and knew that's how I wanted to start it. Um, you know, for, for us, we had, I had, I've been doing sustainability. This is my 27th year in the bourbon industry in sustainability. So I had not heard of it. And to be quite honest, and I'm just going to be genuine and transparent here. I'm never a fan of certifications because I always, (laughs) I, I always think that you can write a check, you can write a check and make it happen. And I think that, you know, that's disingenuous and I, I, I don't like that. So when I was approached that um, by our managing director, that this is something that he wanted to pursue, I was a total skeptic. So um, I, I dug into it and then I thought, wow, this is the most transparent 
genuine certification that I've ever that I've ever even researched. Um, there, there is no write a check and get your B, B Corp certification. It's you got to be living it and you got to be doing it. So for us, because, you know, Makers has been, you know, we were founded by conservationists and that's back before it was cool and sexy and all of that before anybody used the word sustainability. So for us, first off, it started kind of like validating what we're doing, seeing, you know, trying to get a good baseline and measuring where we are. But ultimately what we wanted was to create relationships with like-minded businesses. And so that's kind of what started that process for us because, you know, with generations, the founders of Makers Mark, Bill and Margie Samuels, uh, were all about nature and that bourbon is an agricultural product and flavor comes from all of that. So they've, they've always been very conservation minded. So for this, it's just, you know, it was a validation process, rigorous one at that, but we thought, <laughs> Why are we trying to reinvent the wheel too? Why why not create relationships with people who've been down this road and um, find the most value-added path forward for us to do good? And we liked the holistic approach like Jamie spoke to. Um, people hear sustainability and they think environmental impact, that's it. No, it's about your people. It's about, it's about your community. It's ultimately, it's about doing the right thing and um, having that as our focus. So that's kind of, we went along this journey to kind of set, you know, measure our baseline, measure where we are and help find a good path forward and create those relationships and gain information and education from others um, that think like we do. Yeah, I was, I'm, I'm really interested to hear, and, and Jamie, I really want to talk to you about what it was like to start a corporation and, and know that when you were going into business from day one, you wanted to be a B Corp. But I, I imagine that there were a lot of things that you probably learned about your business that you didn't know you didn't know um, as you were, you know, Maker's Mark has been around for a, a little while. You're fairly established. <laughs> and I imagine going through that certification process and really having to look under the hood of Maker's Mark was pretty eye-opening. Absolutely. Uh, well, and we do, we're, we do a really nice job but we are not perfect and we never claim to be. So that was kind of, you know, how do we hold ourselves accountable? What are our areas of opportunity? And this helped us, I, we were able to narrow those down. You know, we do, we do a fantastic job in-house. So how are we rolling that out? How are we partnering with, you know, that's where I think our areas of opportunity lie is the partnerships we've had, what expectations do we have for them? Just like you had mentioned, you know, working in your bar and making sure, you know, what are what are our partners sustainability objectives and how do we help them? You know, that's I feel like that's a role. And then how do we get more in the industry? We're the largest um, distillery in the world that is B Corp certified. Mm -hmm. How do we, and there's there's one much, you know, much bigger than we are. How do we get them on board? We don't want to be known as the makers that is the largest um, B Corp certified distillery. We want other people to do this as well and make it kind of an industry standard, shall we say. Right. The goal for me at Etheria was to um, sort of stake that in the ground for everything moving forward with my company as a way to start the, pr the process of vetting every bottle that's on the back bar why would I want to do business with people who don't do business the way that I do business, right? If I'm trying exactly. to do all these things and then I'm dealing with people who are actively or, or, or passively not trying to do all these things, then I don't necessarily want them on the back bar. And the back bar for me just seemed like the first step because we always cultivate such relationships with, with spirits makers. Um, but the goal is to have this trickle all the way down to, you know, who makes our linens, who manufactures our our flatware, who, 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 you know, fires the ceramics to be our plateware. Like let's get all the way down the list. And I, I, I assume that like, this is the path forward, you know, 
Uh, B Corps, uh, I looked it up real fast. They've been around since 2006. Uh, 2007 was the first year that uh, the first 82 B Corps were formed. Um, and I think it's pretty fascinating. Uh, and if we could all maybe go down this trail, then we would all know just by this certification that we have that we're dealing with people who are like-minded, right? That's kind of the ultimate goal. Yeah. Our gift gallery that we have here, our visitor center now, we partner with um, all of our wares come from some our fellow B Corp. You know, making sure that we're keeping that in mind. We don't, we're eliminating single-use plastics. You know, we're a zero landfill distillery. So, which is a huge, huge undertaking that when I say we failed many times, we failed many times and we finally got it right in about December of 2022. I think we were officially zero landfill. But um, so how do we partner with others that are wanting to explore that and let them, you know, we have lessons learned, a million and one of them. Why not share that? Why have people start from scratch? So, you know, to me, that's what it, that's what it's about. And for us understanding that nobody is at the, we're not all at the same place in our journey. So how do we help others who are struggling and they have the interest and they are wanting to make a commitment, but you know, they're not quite far as long as we are. So how do we help them? And then we look to those leaders like Patagonia, all birds, them and say, you know, you've really got it lined out. How can you help me? And so it's that kind of those relationships that they've been so helpful and made it um, just made the process simpler. 100% agree with Kim. I think one of the things um, that's super helpful for any company that is easy and readily available to do is to take the B impact assessment. That really shows you where you are and helps you create a roadmap if you're interested. Not, not, I mean, you don't even have to be interested in becoming a B Corp, just becoming better and more sustainable. And it will show you the areas where you're strong and it will show you the areas where you're weak and it will help, help guide you on how to become better. And like Kim said, we are not perfect in any way, but we're on this <laughs> journey to continue to improve um, and to influence others. We don't want to be in less than 12 U.S. distilleries in B Corp. We want as many distilleries as possible, as many companies as possible to become B Corps because it's just better for our world. Absolutely. One thing that you'll find if you are a B Corp, that when someone comes to your campus or, you know, your place of business, they're going to see that you're living these things on a daily. Um, My pet peeve is always where you hear companies, they have their 2030 goal and their 2040 goal and their 2050 goal. And they never tell you what they're doing now. And uh, that's one thing you'll find if you come to Makers or Jamie's business. We're living it daily. We're not perfect. And we still have areas of opportunity. But we're not just talking about this, you know, what we may do 20, 30 years from now. We're going to show you how we live it on a daily basis. And I think that's what sets us apart. Yeah, that's a- very that, cool. that's that's super admirable, and uh, and I'm certain that it, you know again as the um, you know the temperature with the con- the consumer changes, more and more people are into that. I know that when I opened up the bar, people were very interested to hear me say why I don't carry brands that they would ask for, or why I carry the brands that I do have on the back bar, and they still do to this day. And you know, uh, we boast that we're a, a, an all tequila mezcal bar. It's the only things, the only spirits we have on the bar. Um, but they're only, uh, I have 49 bottles, you know, so people are like, well, why don't you have this or that? And I say, well, I looked into them and they're not kind of like in alignment with my ways of thinking. And I think that, as I said, and as you've said as well, this seems to be the path forward, but let's talk about how you get there. You mentioned earlier that it's a, it's, it's a, a multi-year process to get certified. What does that even look like? Are people coming to visit? Are they, uh, again, are they outlining these guidelines for you? And then you have to sort of achieve these goals. And then how does that certification go? Uh, well, for me, we took, for mine, my, my, our process is going to be much different. For me, once I took the initial assessment, we were already, um, we were immediately certified because, which then, don't get me wrong, you do the assessment and then they make you validate with documentation 
everything you answered. You go down that legal Right, you can't road. just be like, no, we're doing it. We're good. Yeah, no. I mean, for <laughs> us, us, luckily, <laughs> the first time we did the assessment and then we went through the rigor of the interviews and validating um, what we had submitted, we had already reached a score that allowed us to be certified. Um, a lot of people have to, you know, get there and then say, okay, here are my, my largest areas of opportunity. So how do I work to gradually achieve that? Uh, very rare to get it. But like I said, it wasn't because of me or what maybe we're doing now. It's because it's just been common practice here. So um, that was the start for me. But the documentation is, I mean, there were days when I'm like, I, you know, may, maybe not. Can, let's just maybe step back from this. I have 800 and some documents here of valid, uh, validation and I'm I'm losing my mind, but um, worth it, worth it, worth it, worth it. But there is, yeah. there is a rigorous process to authenticate and validate everything you've submitted. Um, no free passes. And I'm yeah. sure Jamie's yeah. situation yeah. was a little different. Mine was a little different. So I started the company and fairly shortly after starting the company, I took the B impact assessment and I realized all the documents I needed to create and all the policies I needed to put in place before really taking on any uh, employee at all. Um, and to really, before even really launching. Um, so I didn't get certified. I started the process before I launched and then I got certified probably what, a year and a half after I launched. So it was it was a long process, um, but it was totally worth it. I, I had some moments, though, where I questioned it. And so I reached out to a couple of folks that had gone through it already. And um, Sam Galsworthy, who, is, uh, who was the CEO of Sip Smith, who then got bought by Beam Centauri, um, really encouraged me to move forward with it. Um, and one of the things he said is, you know, I knew I wasn't doing, um, you know, I was a little blip as Sip Smith in this world, but I knew, you know, as soon as I got into a bigger portfolio company, then I could go brand by brand and work on getting them B Corp certified. And I thought that was such a cool message because here I am just a tiny, we're four people, uh, like a tiny company, but I'm uh, working on just trying to inspire others to do what we did. Um, so. Yeah. And, you know, we have over, we have over 300 employees here on campus. So and I think the larger you are, the more challenging it is. Um, but we're already seeing, you know, the, our people are, we, we employ just fantastic people. I, the culture here is phenomenal. But we have seen, which to me, this is how I kind of measure success. Uh, I had a, we started when we rolled out, you know, our zero landfill, we have, we compost here on site. We recycle, we pulverize all our own glass and we use that glass to make pathways and artwork instead of shipping things to recyclers. Um, and then we educate our people along the way. And because they're they're the best source of ideas. Your people here are always, you know, your wealth of information. And I got a call one day from um, the local school system who got my personal cell phone number. And I have no idea how. But um, they said. Um, AI. <laughs> AI. 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 Good. AI. Um, it's they the were box. like, Miss Harmon, there is a young girl here. She's in seventh grade and she is harassing us because we aren't properly handling waste here at the school. And she gave me your phone number and said, you're going to show us how to fix it. And come <laughs> to find out her mom worked here. And the mom, as we went down this path, the mom went home and it started all of these practices at home. And it taught her That's taught her cool. children. And then her child goes to school and harasses and champions, you know, harasses the principal, champions. And she goes, I'll own it. It's going to be a project I'm going to do. And that little girl won a scholarship to go take advanced, you know, um, pre-college courses because she championed. And I'm like, that's what good looks like to me. It's, 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 yeah, that's it's that trickle down effect. And, you know, 
that that's where I get the, all the good feels when it comes to that's where my satisfaction comes from. When I see that there's a couple, you know, these other generations, they believe it. And if we in the industry can help champion these types of things, I think it's our, it's our, it's our responsibility to our society and our community. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I love that. For sure. Well, I definitely want to dig a little bit more into the process of how exactly one gets B Corp certified and what yeah. it might mean if if more people followed the example that you two were setting. But before we do that, we should take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. So we'll be right back with Jamie Hunt and Kim Harmon here on The Speakeasy on Heritage Radio Network. Stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Roberta's, home of Heritage Radio Network. Roberta's was founded in Bushwick in 2008 and has become one of the most iconic restaurants in the country. HRN made its home inside of Roberta's in 2009, and together they have become part of the DIY fabric of the neighborhood. Roberta's is open for lunch and dinner seven days a week and serves much more than just the famous wood-fired pizzas. Their team dreams up new salads, pastas, and sandwiches on the regular. Roberta's Tiki Bar is alive and well in the back garden serving up frozen drinks in the summer and hot toddies in the winter. Stop by the bakery and takeout spot next door for fresh breads, sticky buns, and pizzas to go. But Roberta's also extends beyond Bushwick, with multiple locations in New York City, Long Island, and Los Angeles. You can also find their frozen pies in grocery stores around the country. The spirit of Roberta's, like Heritage Radio Network, is everywhere. Here's to many more years of pizza-powered radio. Learn more about Roberta's at robertaspizza.com. And we're back. You're listening to The Speakeasy on Heritage Radio Network. And in the studio, we have Jamie Hunt and Kim Harmon. We've been talking about all things sustainability and responsibility in, in the pursuit of getting certification for a B Corp. Actually, you know, before the break, we were talking about the two different paths that you both were on to get there. Jamie, of course, you've got your four-person Crew, which uh, <laughs> one of these. <laughs> Kim, you've got three hundred people. Um, but you know, when I was thinking about it, like I'm glad that you looked up the date on that, Souther, because you said 2006 is when they started B Corps. I remember talking with Adam Harris about it must have been like 2007 or 2008, and he was talking about all the things that Maker's Mark was doing as far as like. Um, water purification and kind of like recycling all these things that they were new initiatives that were going into play back then. And so it seems like this has already been something, even if you hadn't heard about it until many years later, you were already working on that. You know, there was all these things that you were wanting to do just out of the, the elevated quality of of just responsibility, you know, uh, for the company. And of course, Jamie, you came into it later, but you were, you already wanted to do this before this, the distillery was starting to open. So really two very different paths you're on, but ultimately with the great mindset and end goal to, to have this certification. The process seems like, I mean, not to discount the, the larger company with 300 people, a lot of extra hands, it seems like it must have been a heavier lift for you, Jamie. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that, I'm curious about that as well. You're starting a business, and I can tell you from my experience, yeah. uh, you know, as a bar owner, it's like opening up a bar and playing the owner role, the GM role, the bar manager role, and the head bartender role. Those are four different full-time jobs, yeah. right? <laughs> and the janitor, which is like double time, <laughs> you know. But like, it's like, it must have been crazy to like – have the vision to open up this business and going through all the stuff, dealing with architects and, and city planning and, uh, you know, permitting and all this stuff. But then you're, was it, did it feel like an extra job stacked on top or was it something that kind of was woven into the building of this business? Getting a little bit of both, but it was definitely an extra job. Um, I am a big, um, proponent for myself to keep on track. I put things in my calendar. So I just blocked off time to do paperwork and answer stuff. Like I would just put two, three hours a day 
And that was my B Corp time. Of course, being an owner, you don't work eight hours a day. <laughs> so you work a lot more, right. especially getting something off the ground. And so, but I made sure I had areas blocked where I didn't have the rest of the distractions. And I just focused on that. And it was either answering the questions, researching the information that they wanted, putting together the documentation that I needed uh, to supply to them. I mean, I created an employee handbook because they said that I needed an employee handbook. And I'm like, I, I now have one sure. employee. Um, <laughs> so, you know, um, right. <laughs> but I have it already for when I have 300. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Right. So, so all that work's not in vain, and, and I'm very curious to hear that as well because you know my company is is certainly bigger than just four people, but but we're still quite small. And I, to be perfectly frank, I certainly have heard the word B Corp pitched around a bunch, but I've never really you know uh, thought you know I was like we're an LLC, whatever. Moving on. Um, well, I was going to ask you that. So, there, is this? Well, this is more of a question for Kim and Jamie, but. Can your LLC become a B Corp or does it have to be each individual business? Oh, because, like, I mean, if Patagonia that's, with that's a if, great question, yes. So, like, because Souther owns like 20 bars, he's opening another one this week or two, you know. Yeah. Um, but for his company, go fully across the board. I mean, because you've gone, are you, I, I know you've been taking steps to become like vegetarian and then vegan for some of the restaurants and oh, just yeah. kind of like you're across the board. Uh, ethos, if you will, you know, if, mm -hmm. if you could kind of like put that in a full employee business document manual, and that's just kind of like the Bible, you know, for you and then be able to submit that, that'd be interesting. Also, I mean, it, it, you're the kind of guy who I think could pull that off. I mean, you're, you're talking to Souther who wrote his first book on his iPhone on the subway in New York city. So <laughs> um, didn't even, didn't even own, didn't even own a computer, you know, so I was going to get so. him. No, sir. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be something to look into. I would, I would think, right? No, I'm, I'm very sad. I'm taking tons of notes during this. Uh, I'm very happy to have the two of you on and talk about this. It's, uh, you know, uh, we have our big powwow weekly meeting on Tuesdays, so we just had it yesterday. But next week, this is going to be a topic of discussion for my company. I'm, uh, I want to, want to delve into it. Um, and, and it's because, as you said, both of you have, have said it in one way or another, like it's because we just we simply want to do the right thing. And we think that we probably are doing the right thing largely just as, as our that's the way we fulfill our lives. Right. Um, so if we could get some sort of certification and then be a part of a group of people who have this certification so that we can look to one another to spot, you know, if I could look to another B Corp. Uh, and say, oh, who who are as the example we used earlier? Who are you using to get your linens? That's a B Corp. Like let's yeah. let's yeah. let's seek each other out in this way and create a network. Yeah, and, and I'm sure and that what, that's been handy for you guys. One as well. thing to mention too is there are now really good B Corp consultants, so you don't have to do all the work yourself now if you don't want to. So um, that's that's certainly a help. I wanted to go through it because I wanted to know all of it before. But I think for my recertification, I'll probably reach out to some B Corp consultants and have them help. And you know, we didn't we didn't use consultants either. And um, you know, we have three hundred and some employees. Don't get me wrong, but they're actually um, producing Maker's Mark and getting it out the door. So it was for us, it was myself and pretty much finance and HR is how we, we uh, the three of us worked together to get it done. But I do think if you source it out, even though, you know, it could be easier, you learn so much in the process um, and maybe just sourcing sure. out some of that work, some of that documentation. But, you know, also for us, you have to think we are owned by a parent company. Makers is owned by Beam Centauri. So we had to go through the process of creating us from a C-Corp to a benefit corporation, which means even though we have a parent company and who, no matter who that is, the board at Makers will make all environmental and social decisions. That stays in our hands. That's our commitment, regardless of what parent company that is. So there are a lot of ways that you can work with. Um, and the B Corp has so many fantastic uh, people on staff who guide you and help you through. So for me, that, that was a 
that was a huge help along the way, you know, reaching out to them, getting that guidance. I did want to say that you don't, you could be an LLC and be a B Corp. You don't have to be a benefits corporation. Some states don't recognize benefits corporations. So we're a C Corp and we're a, a B Corp. So and see, you can in Kentucky we had to be. Yeah. yeah. So there's different in different states. Gotcha. Yeah. And you know, the one thing you'll love no matter where you are is that they don't set these strict guardrails. They're like, what do you want to be? And how do we help you do that the best, you know, make you the best you in that scenario? It's not like other corporations, well, you must do A, B, C, and D. It's like, what's your plan? So how do we make the most of that? and reduce your impact and help enable, you know, right. resources to help others. So that's what makes it pretty right, unique. I think that's cool too. Cause you, uh, in my notes, it says that you have to score on their uh, criteria. It's 80 or more, 80 or higher. So that actually, when you say that you can kind of like make it what you want it to be, cause I mean, obviously, you know, I don't think Patagonia is, you know, they're not crushing up their, their glass and uh, yeah, right. art. Not, I don't know if they have any glass. <laughs> so it, it's, it's dependent on the, you know, what kind of a company it is. Right? Absolutely. So I think that's really cool. You can really, uh, really kind of Kate, like kind of modify it to whatever it is that you do. So sure. And I, cool. I would, I would assume that unlike say the DOH, the department of health who just comes in unexpectedly and inspects us. And, you know, I always say it's like going into a knife fight, just to understand you're going to get cut today. <laughs> um, like I, I would hope that these guys have tools for you uh, to guide you to, to continue that guidance. You can keep talking about how it, they guided you through the process, but do they, do they help you kind of maintain it as you go as well? I just reached out to him yesterday with a question about something and, you know, you'll find a couple different points of contact. And I re- when I reach out within 24 hours, they're like, hey, this is what we think. Here's here's the language that supports that. Um, always. I mean, I have not had, I've had zero negative experiences with them to date. And I'm a pretty big critic of this stuff. So that's what, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, that's, everybody's like, well, if Kim's okay, then it must be. It must be on the up and up because she will critique uh, greenwashing and, you know, buying your way into certifications. You know, I was talking to Jamie the other day and I'm like, I'm just a big old hippie. I'm a 50 year old hippie now, but, you know, I've been doing this <laughs> stuff for years. And if it's not authentic, I want no part of it. And that's right. why I, I was so leery in the beginning. But, you know, I've drank the Kool-Aid now. I'm totally on board. Um I have yet to have an experience where they I hate to say, half-assed anything uh, with B Corp. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter that we're makers and that we uh, that our profit margins are what they are. They don't care. They treat us just like everyone else, and that's what I love about it. That's that's amazing. And I would ask, though, you know, we've we've danced around it a little bit and you've mentioned a couple of times you can't just uh, pay to win. But there's certainly a cost involved, I have to yeah. assume. And is there like a, a, it, does it does it have a, a sliding scale for, say, someone as large scale as you or maybe someone as small scale uh, as me or even smaller scale, it sounds as Jamie? You know, how does how does that all come to fruition? Jamie, you want to speak to that one? Well, um, I'm not sure on the sliding scale. I thought it was the same certification amount, but maybe Kim, between Kim and I, we can answer it. Um, so we we pay uh, a couple thousand dollars every year um, it, to be We certified. pay 40. We there pay 40. That's a yeah. sliding scale. There we go. So there is a, so, so there, there is a, so it does slide. <clears throat> Which of course makes sense. Like, how could they? How, how could I even chance getting into it if I'm a, a you know a, a corner uh, ice cream shop in New York City with one location that that has you know a hundred square feet versus you know uh, something like Patagonia as as has been mentioned a couple times on the show. Um, I, uh, so I think that's wonderful to hear as well that that they the scale slides based on maybe this I don't know what they base it on but we can find out I, I suppose it's based on I'm head count very excited to head look count into this. revenue. Um, uh, what. Yeah. That's exactly, you know, you put in your headcount, your last three years revenue, and that's what it, that's what it's built on. So Jamie's was like one person, <laughs> zero income. <laughs> that was, that part yeah. was easy to yeah. fill in, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> quick math, quick math. 
Well, let me ask you this. It sounds like this is actually a pretty, I, I was I was going to ask if this was a process that had unnecessary hurdles in it that were frustrating, but it sounds like uh, hearing you two talk about it, that it's actually been a pretty straightforward thing for, for both of you. I mean, obviously, you know, there was work involved, but there were no, uh, you know, BS hoops that you had to jump through. So I guess the question I want to ask now is, why why doesn't everybody do this and what would it mean for our industry if we got more distilleries i mean there are less than 30 distilleries in the world that are b corps right now what would what would it mean if we even had a couple dozen more following in this example i feel like i've been talking a ton jamie you go sorry <laughs> uh i mean i it i think it's only good i mean you're going to have higher quality products you're going to have people that treat the environment better, people that treat their people better, people that are really engaged in the community. I mean, it's only going to make things better. And hopefully that trickles down, like Kim was saying, you know, we, we buy, we use botanicals. And so we look at where we buy the botanicals from and we want to reward the folks that are doing it right, um, just as we want to be doing it right. Um, and when we look at just everything, every part, like partnerships and so forth, we could create a, a huge impact in the world by adding more B Corps and partnering together. I mean, that's one of the cool things about becoming a B Corp. You're part of a community. There's a site you can go to. You can ask a bunch of questions. Uh, you can reach out. Everyone will take your call or, or your email and will um, provide any answers or be like, yeah, we can do this right now. So we've partnered with a bunch of different B Corps. And like Kim was saying, like we have um, – we have a lot of B Corp merchandise at our distillery and we seek out B Corps to add to that and for services as well. So I think it can only get better. It hits so many different levels. And when you taught, when Kim was telling the story about, you know, even the girl at school um, making an impact there, I mean, that's what you can do. I mean, it just radiates. Um, like It's like a snowball right effect. Yeah. And, and I think that people who, especially larger companies, I can understand the strain from a manpower for the smaller. That just shows a true devotion from people like Jamie. Um, larger companies, where are your priorities? And in the future, I believe that while we do it because we, you know, Rob Samuel is who our managing director and his grandparents founded this company. He, it's a priority for him, always will be. So, you know, I've got that support. Others, you know, it's like, is it their priority or do they want something sexy to splash on a billboard? Rob doesn't, you know, you're not going to walk down here and see anything plastered that says across this campus B Corp certified. You'll see we have a little pin on and we'll talk about a few things, but it's like, for us, it's just living it. Because it's the right thing to do. So hopefully, as we partner with these other vendors, then they're going to set expectations for those that they work with. And we want to see that ripple effect. Uh, and I think we're on the right path. It's just slow. And our, our younger generations now expect this. Um, you know, I, I have I have a 25 right. and a 28-year-old. And, you know, they're... You know, one of them even refuses to use Amazon or anything. You know, he's all about small business and locally sourced. And I think, you know, I, I think that you're, there's more of that. And as that generation grows and grows, the expectation from the consumer, they're raising the bar. So yeah. I feel fortunate that we're a bit ahead of the game. But um, 10, 15 years from now, um, I do believe that this will be more a necessity in your business plan because you have a huge population that have raised their expectations, especially on how you, yeah, and how you treat your people yeah. and how you give back to your community. It's just not about environmental impact. We learned through COVID how much people, you know, they, they've started reanalyzing their life and what's important. And it's how we treat one another. And it's how in times of crisis or a need that we give back. And 
here, that's just about what you, I, I told Janie the other day, um, when I go to my boss, who is Rob Samuels, and I'll ask him a question, I'm stressed because of budget or whatever, and he'll go, what's the right thing to do? And I'm like, I've only, you know, I've been at Makers for the last five years. So first time a boss has ever asked me that. When he says, you know, what's mm-hmm. the right thing to do? And then I tell him, he goes, you have your answer. And I'm like, oh, you know, oh, that feels good. You know, that feels good. <laughs> yeah. And sure. I think we need more of that. We need more of that. I agree. Yeah. And and if our if well, anyone well. listening right now is uh, feeling inclined to badger some of their favorite brands about whether or not they are a B Corp and possibly coming a B Corp, how could they get more information about that? There's plenty of information on their website that can get you yeah. started. We and I try to be I try to be a resource for others. Um, anyone that reaches out to me directly and says, Kim, we're thinking about this. I'm happy to send them all my information Um, or, you know, and talk to them, have a one-on-one call just about my experience Uh, because I feel like that that's responsibility that we have as leaders of companies that are B Corp. If we're not willing to give a little bit of our time to others that are anticipating going down this road, then we're failing as well. So it's, I have, I, I try to, I'm kind of the mentee of a couple of the bigger, more well-known B Corps, but then I also want to mentor some smaller ones that are ready to start out. Cool. Thank you for doing that. It's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is, this has been very eye-opening. Yeah, very um, fascinating episode. And yeah. I, I just, I, I love this. I, I love when we get to talk about the business of the business, you know, mm-hmm. and like, and getting into like just the honestly what got us into this in the first place, which is to me, it's people. Yeah, connectivity. And, and that's yeah. And so this is really fascinating. I'm gonna talk to my partners about this after the show and see if we can kind of get on the same track, which we should be mostly there, but also just for the exercise of seeing where we can improve, as you said before. Yep. I think that's yeah. huge. Take, so take the very assessment cool. for sure. And then, like Kim said, any of us that are B Corps, we're all willing to give some time to help others become B Corps uh, and to answer any question. Jamie, are, are you uh, are you putting it out there at your business like B Corp? <laughs> I am trying to put it out there. And the reason why I'm doing it is not just for my business. It's because I want to influence others to become B Corps mm-hmm. and I want to educate others yeah. on on buying from and supporting other B Corps because that's how we grow and that's how we make a bigger change, a bigger positive change, I should say. Cool. Yeah. You just spurring that curiosity and having someone ask, oh, what, is, what does this mean? Because I got to tell you, uh, until today, uh, this episode, I – did not have any clue what a B Corp was. So I'm um, super, and if, and if I'm in a, you know, a growing and pretty, pretty reasonably sized business and I, it wasn't even a blip on my radar. I'm certain that that means that many consumers out there have no yeah. idea either. So again, I think uh, pretty cool to get this message out there. And I really appreciate you both being on and spending some time with us today. Um, if anyone wanted to reach out to either of you, uh, could they find you on social media or something like that? How would, how would they find you? We're at Fast Penny Spirits or at Amaro Americano on Instagram. And then I'm at Jamie A Hunt 70 on Instagram. You can DM me as well. I answer all my DMs. Um, yeah, right on. I, I, nev- I am Green Girl KY on Twitter. Yeah, that's, I, I, I'm bad about chat. I know it. I don't know a login for anything. I, I don't, but, uh, and then I think my information's on the Maker's Mark website as well, um, at makersmark.com. Mm-hmm. So you, and cool. then we, we do, um, talk about B Corp on our website and we, we do when we have our tour paths, when we have, you know, guests come, we, we talk about it there, but, um, we like to really just show it like, see them that when they come yeah. out and they get a compostable cup and they see yeah. the big sexy hot rod 1206 composter back in the back and you know <laughs> stuff like that um i like them to see that that we're living this on a daily basis and then they're they're the best at getting yeah. the word out yeah that's true you know uh, I, 
I could see in the future, my if we pursue this, and I, I'm going to push this to, towards my company, like I said, next week, um, and see what, what happens. And I can see in the future us hosting events for other businesses in the neighborhood to just come by and say, like, let's teach you what a B Corp is, and maybe you want to get involved as well. Um, if you guys want to do that yeah. up there at Makers, uh, yeah. I'm sure one of us here would be glad to come this up. This would and also be a, be a great sure, tale yeah. seminar. I'm sure, sure one of us would be glad to come up and guest, guest bartend the well, event. Well, that, that's actually one of our goals <laughs> is to hold a uh, host – something once a year on campus to bring in interested parties and, you know, also let them enjoy the maker's experience while talking about what we do. So, like I said, everybody didn't have to reinvent the wheel, you know, you know, work together, share information, you know, we're it's, it's for a good cause. Why would we want to hold that close to the vest? I mean, let's share yeah, best right. practices. And we've already had um, a session at our distillery with fellow B Corps and people interested in becoming a B Corp. So, and we plan on continuing to do Good that. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Well, this has been great. And yes. like I said, I think this would, this would be a great, any BCB Tales Portland Cocktail Week would be a great seminar for all of those, you know, just get the, get that little, word out little, that way too. Little, but um, little but secret now, here, Damon, I've pitched it to both. <laughs> yeah. So oh, um, nice. yeah, yeah. It, has, it has not been picked up. So maybe next year. And- well, we'll just send them this episode <laughs> yeah. and then they'll be like, we can't afford not to do this. They, they do everything we say. <laughs> <laughs> That's especially, right. especially at Tales. <laughs> they love and us. Jamie, I've got to get, you're going to have to host something up there because my dearest friends from call, from grad school I live in Washington State and um, Oregon, and I haven't been up there for like since pre-COVID. So I'd love to come up that way and visit. So absolutely, would love to have you, and I would love to go to the Maker's uh, Distillery and check all that goodness out. Open invitation. I'm sensing a collab. Yes. We'll all go. <laughs> I'm sensing a collab. Yeah. I'm sensing a collab. Yes. Open invitation anytime, guys. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, this has been fun. Very informative. Yes. Thank you for for doing what you're doing, first of all, but then also sharing it with us so we can kind of keep moving it forward and uh, to bigger and better things, right? So that's it for the Speakeasy this week. Check out Heritage Radio Network for more programs like this one. And until next week, y'all. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. So you don't shun the devil with your rock. The Speakeasy is powered by Simplecast. Thanks for listening to Heritage Radio Network. Food and drink radio supported by you. Keep in touch at heritageradionetwork.org slash subscribe. It's gonna get you